Welcome to Ring of Fire. I'm Emmy the Birth Wizard. And I'm Alex Barr. <laughs> and it's been a fun start to our day. So, yeah. yeah, let's do this. We're recording on a weird night. We're not streaming live. No. We're doing all the weird things. It, it's completely off from I our normal, it's like... Thrown us off. <laughs> <laughs> like, if we sat here for a good half hour before the episode trying to, like, make sure we, we had it all set... Which is not normally our vibe. It's very like, hey, you read up on that topic? Yep. You ready to press start? Yep. Like, yeah. <laughs> so. so we're starting a little three episode series, maybe more episodes in the future, called How to Do It. I'm excited about this. Me too. I feel like um, we've had enough people reach out and be like, hey, like, how did you guys become doulas? Or what trainings did you do? And, like, I'm not even saying it in that buzzwordy kind of way of, like, you know, when people ask me this question, right? Like, I've legitimately... Since everybody was asking. I right. guess I have to tell you. Right. Uh, what every, like, influencer starts out their thing with. Like, yeah. ah, I lost 12 inches and I keep getting asked about it, right? Barf. <laughs> <laughs> but we've legitimately been asked, each of us separately, by different individuals who listen to the podcast like where do you guys go through you don't like these trainings that you guys talk shit about like don't uncap out then where like we talk a lot of shit about (laughs) don't uncap and other big organizations and not enough about like the places that we like better options (laughs) because this is ring of fire and we're here to like light some asses Um, (laughs) we just need to talk shit right hopefully this will be a good little we're going to talk about trainings. We're going to talk about mentorships on this episode. Hopefully, we even if you aren't a new doula, maybe you hear some new things. Maybe recertify with somebody else. Maybe take a new additional training. Maybe decide between these supplemental trainings or different things that you kind of want to do from this episode. Correct. And I think um, we are on, and I've said it in other podcast episodes, I really feel like we're on this cusp between like where doulas are seen as hobbyists or even like not to be taken seriously even though we invest thousands of dollars into these businesses (laughs) and our trainings to that place where it's like you have to be a professional you have to have done the trainings you have to have done them through these organizations and i really feel like we're on that cusp and people literally someone who did it came out with a training in the last year like people are coming out with trainings constantly so there's always someone new to learn about and like how do you decipher who's the right person to take trainings through right and you and i are both very professional these aren't this isn't a hobby for either of us it's it's a business and it's a heart business but it's still a business it's not just like a whatever right happens kind of thing it's like no this is what we're doing. It's kind of not an option. Yeah. <laughs> Which is fine if, it, if people want to make that their hobby, but we're definitely coming at it from like a, this is what we want to do long term type thing. Yeah. So. I spoke to a doula recently who said she was in it for 30 years and I just wanted to be like, how? Why? Show me. <laughs> like, <laughs> so uh, this is for those who have even been in it for a long time and like, yeah. how do I keep advancing my knowledge because that's so beneficial to our birthers and our families and that's so beneficial to us as well because i feel like that's one of that informational support is so such a key component to what we do yes even introducing these new ideas that doctors aren't talking about and hospitals aren't talking about and you know there's even a gap in knowledge in midwifery so that knowledge gap is big and yes are us coming in to offer that help is like very important and very vital in my opinion yeah for sure so um with trainings i thought like we thought talk about the top five things that are like oh my god i'm so glad this this is a part of the trainings this is why i want to sign up like our five like gold flags i guess yeah and we should maybe talk about five red flags okay fair so talk about like what what would make me pick a training correct okay so i would say the cost is important right yeah of course that doesn't mean that the cheapest one is the best and the most expensive one is the worst but cost is important because it is an investment that you're making yep right Um, i gotta claim it on my taxes it better be a good time yeah and 
that is the hole that you're digging, right? You're going to have to eventually get yourself out of it. And if you invested such a huge chunk of money, it's going to take a long time before you see... Oh, for sure. A profit, right? Being someone who invested almost $6,000 my first year in education only, like yeah. that's enough to go to community college for a full year yeah. worth of education. Yeah. Be conscious of how much you're spending on training. Yeah. I wouldn't I wouldn't trade anything for the world for that. I also have a sugar daddy who like <laughs> is my prime investor yeah. in Birth Wizard. So he was like, yeah, go do that. But it is something that you have to be conscious of. And I think that especially it's one of the big barriers to people doing this work and diving into it is the money yes. side of it, right? Um so I think that's a very good thing to look at and consider and how much you can spend and invest in it and how long it's going to take you to earn back, right? Correct. So that'll be my first gold flag or green flag? We'll uh, call it a gold flag. Yeah, I think gold. All right. Yeah. All right. What's your first? Um, the number one thing is how, how many people have taken the trainings? How long has it been active for is a really big thing for me. Yeah. Um, and the reason why is I want to make sure that it's something that won't disappear in a year or two. And then I'm the only one who took it. Yeah. Um, yeah. Because like I want to support small businesses and doulas who are coming out with trainings or professionals coming out with trainings. But yeah. I really want to make sure like if I'm taking a training that it has some sort of backing behind it of education yeah. or legitimacy going on and it's not someone who stayed up for a weekend and gave me a powerpoint like yeah because i don't want to say like i'm a VBAC wizard and then in a year my client was like what the hell is that right exactly i can't figure out what that is like, right you can't show me that right there's no right. link to click right right yeah. um and i i've seen the ones that are where you can tell someone crapped it out in a weekend and i've also seen the ones where someone's like i'm just coming out with this i'm gonna see how it does and i've taken plenty through like pelvic floor therapists in that kind of way mm -hmm. but i find it easier to hand over the money with someone who's like i'm a doctor in this thing like let me teach There's you about still it. the expert in what right. you're learning for sure yeah but yeah. being and careful with like who's going to send me a seal to put on my website like i'm very conscious yeah. of that yeah. um my next one which i didn't realize before i took my initial training is like my favorite word, intersectionality. Yes. Right? Like if I'm taking a doula training, um, it's got to be comprehensive in that yes. way. It's got to, it cannot just gloss over racial disparities and what disabled people go through in pregnancy. And yes, like it cannot just say like, oh, birth is beautiful and magical and physiological and... Which it is, and also yeah. it's not. <laughs> it is, and also it's not. And yeah. our system does not allow it to be as well right? in many ways, right? For sure. Our, the medical industrial complex does not, like, allow, allow yeah. people to have, the doesn't allow people to have those types of births very yeah. often, especially if they're not white, thin, straight women. So yeah. the intersectionalities of birth are really important. And important to consider because that gives you more of a context with clients and an understanding of maybe what they're experiencing. For sure. I think that's such a good point. Um, honestly, I'm going to try and say a different ones than yours, but <laughs> I have a feeling some of ours are going to cross over, obviously. Sure. And that that's a big one for me is intersectionality. But I'll go with this one. Um, it. I find it to be a great value if I'm able to take further trainings than the initial one. And okay. let me back, like, make this clear. So a really great example is I took one through birthing advocacy that was for queer fertility and trans fertility. They've now come out with like the next level class and I can now find other educations to help give me more education around like that top. Yeah. yeah. There's continuing education. It's not this once and then that's right. it. I, I really don't like dead end ed education. And you can find them out there of like, yep, we taught you the thing. Bye. Like, I, I want to make sure that I'm I'm creating a skill tree when I'm taking yeah. an education. Yeah. Um, and it's interesting. My um, 
I took a course on acupressure for birth from an acupuncturist. Um, they don't exist anymore. Oh. So I've like tried to recommend them to other doulas and Oh. Gone. Fun. <laughs> Great. So this exact thing you said. Yeah. Because I, I I've seen it. I've seen yeah. it happen and I think people do it with good intention, but of course like you can't always yeah. like have the fir- follow through and also like life and how things work out but yeah. still um that's that's something i look at which is yeah. why i'm so um appreciative of the people that have gone through my trainings initially <laughs> cuz that's a that's a big ask yeah that's a big ask um i will reveal my third is okay. this my third or my yeah. fourth somewhere in there um is who's teaching the class and what do they look like that's what i was about to say uh and are they the are they the expert because they're the expert or the, are they like a teacher from the expert? Like who am I going to be interacting with as yeah. the educator? Cause you should be bringing in people who understand that experience. Yes. Not just have somebody rent who have the one teacher teach everything. Or, um, and this is actually an organization. I took some of my training through pro doula is really mm-hmm. like guilty of this, of having an educator, for like a ton of different educations. So mm. that person's not truly like an expert in any of those. Interesting. Um, because they're they're an educator for all of the pro doula courses. So when and ideally, especially if we're talking about different intersections of birth or we're talking about things that you want real expertise from, you would be sourcing that teacher out for that module or that class or yeah. whatever. And I also want to be able to ask the random questions that come to mind. Um, a great example is I was at Spinning Babies, and one of the things I asked about was, like, what are the moves I can do with larger bodies? What? How do I modify it? What are the moves I can do with someone with hypermobility? And that teacher was oh. on top oh, of she it. Knew. She knew. That's amazing. Yeah. Um, and the reason why I is, thought you were going to be like, she was like, uh, no, <laughs> but she was super on top of it, and it's because she's had those questions before, and this is her like thing. This is her thing, yeah. So yeah, that, that's awesome. All right, what's my third? Um, <laughs> I want to just say like the overall vibe. <laughs> I I think that's fair. That's totally fair. Who's being attracted to this course? I think is yeah, like essentially what you're saying. You know, like <laughs> sorry, because <laughs> that's such a shitty like way to put it. But I see the difference between my initial training and the training that I'm going through currently. Mm. The vibes are way different. The energy is different. How they're approaching classes, how they're approaching students, the community of it, very different. My first experience was very much like, we're turning you out because this is a money-making yeah. opportunity. Whereas what I'm going through now is like, oh, no, like, we're going to actually give you the tools that you need kind yeah. of thing. And so that's where I'm like, if I, the reason why I wanted to talk about this is I want, if I wanted someone to, like, go back in time and be like, hey, Alex, there are so many other options, right? <laughs> there are so many other opportunities waiting right. for you, right? So, um, I think that's a fair one because the most common thing I hear people say is like, oh, make sure you check them out and see if your philosophies meet up. Yeah. The problem is, is I find that a lot of times it's hard for you to delve into what each place's philosophy is, especially if they're a very large organization. And all their stuff's like behind paywalls. Paywalls, right? You're seeing the front they're putting on their website kind of thing. So even like if someone took the time to talk to other doulas. Yeah. First, right? Yeah. Don't take the training and then join the, the doula group. Like, yeah. join the doula group and be like, let me know who sucks and who's not. Right. right. And we had, when we asked that question, we had people be like, um, like, someone was talking about Dona. My trainer was amazing, 10 out of 10, but would I go through Dona again? Zero. That, not a chance, That's right? my That's my experience. Yeah. Yeah, and I have that experience because of the certification process after yeah. being so difficult. And I could tell either we need updating Dona, which is prob- it's very probable, yeah. or we're making it difficult so people pay out money, which is also totally probable. Yeah. Um, or it's both, or, it's, or there could be a third reason, but that was my experience, yeah. which is why I have a hard time recommending them. Yeah. I will say, though, that they're very accessible. 
Yeah. So if you're someone who's like, I want to be a d- doula today, like you could but find a training pretty easily. Accessible? No. I have some numbers here if you'd like to hear <laughs> Oh, them. I would love to hear it. Right. So um, donor requires a childbirth class. Do they? Currently, yes. Interesting. About $200 is the average that you find to take a class. Um, the workshops are 400 to $500. Yes, I did know that. Those are like the training. You have to pay for a year membership. That's $100. Yeah. You have to pay for a certification package. That's $50. Yep. Um, and you have to do, uh, what does this say? I can't even read my own. Oh, uh, breastfeeding or chest feeding class. Yep. Mine was 100 and. 20, 150, I think. It was like an online one that I took for my training. Um, and then to pay the processing fee, it's $110. Yeah. So it's quite a hefty. Yeah, it is. And then I've had ex- pe- I've had people going through the certification process now in COVID, and they have to, to get provisional certificates. They're paying extra fees. They're still paying the right. yearly membership. They're having to send in completed packets and then send them in again. And the provisional certificates, like, good for like 90 days like that's that seems very inaccessible to me yeah i guess the better way of putting it is like not so much um that certification is accessible yeah. what's accessible is going to one of the trainings in person right Fair. um because there's plenty of people out there i'm one of them like i do better in person with yeah. education rather yeah. than online and there's plenty of organizations out there that i know i would much rather be certified with but yeah. it's online training and i i essentially my brain goes when i'm in yeah. those two trainings. Okay, so do you have any more gold flags or should we talk about the trainings we've personally done? My last gold flag that I think everyone should know is literally like if you interact with any sort of their sub content, right? What are they posting and how does it make you feel? Interesting. Because if you're like really resonating with it prior to even taking the trainings yeah. or like really exploring any of it, it's probably the place for you. It's a great tip. Yeah. So check out their Instagram, their YouTube. Like, yeah. what are they putting out there? Also, the people who are trained by them, what are those people putting out there? That's a great tip, like, actually. Th- those are yeah. the kind of things that will give you the insight of, like, do I belong here? Because these people are posting the same way I want to or, like, the same way I want to spread education or I yeah. want to, like, experience birth. Yeah. That probably gives you a good insight if that's the spot for you, that's, right? Yeah. Versus the ones, I, I won't name names, there's a particular doula out there who does a training where I'm like, you're not for me. Yeah. You're not for me. There's but a couple of them. I'm super excited for what you're doing. Good job. Right. <laughs> and that is the thing is like different trainings are good for different people. For sure. Right. Um, so let's hear about the trainings you've done. Uh, the trainings I Let's have... hear about your journey. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, guys, I- I'm going to try and make sure that I remember all of these. Ready? Um, so, I went through the Dona initial training, which also had a, a chest feeding class at the beginning of it. So, I took that. Then, after that, I took uh, a queer... Uh, the Queer Birth Club. I would totally recommend them, especially if you need just, like, baseline level understanding of queer justice and like those spaces and how systems are kind of set up yeah. against LGBT, uh, LGBTQIA individuals. Um, that's a real baseline though. If you yeah. have any more understanding than baseline, uh, you're going to be bored in the class. Yeah. Um, and it's also done from a British perspective. So they're talking quite a bit about like how it interacts in their system. So be aware when you're taking it. However, if you don't have any information, if you still don't understand what all those acronyms mean, it's a great class. Yeah. Um, I went through, like I said, Birthing Advocacy's uh, Queer and Trans Fertility course. It was an excellent class. I cried every day. Oh, I, I cried every day. And it's been like the most information that I could ever want. Yeah. Um, I went through VBAC links, uh, watch that sub episode. (laughs) We don't need to get into that one again. Um, I did VBAC Academy, who's a local individual here that I took their training. I technically was mentored by her for Mm -hmm. a little while. Um, I also took Taylor Davis's 
V-back training. <laughs> you guys hearing a trend? V-back, V-back. V-back. Queer. V-back. V-back. <laughs> queer. Um, I also took spinning babies. I took a trauma-informed class through Udemy, which is from a particular doctor by the name of Dr. Aaron Bow. Okay. Um, and that was like uh, trauma-informed care for birth workers. So that was my initial thing. Also yeah. a great class if you're looking for that, like, how do I... How do I do it? Right? Like yeah. baseline stuff. Um, I took pelvic floor uh, trainings. Uh, uh, it was essentially like a C-section recovery course from a pelvic floor therapist. And then there's some, there's other ones. That's the problem though. Like, so then I would say, what was the one that mm-hmm. you wish you would have skipped? And okay. what was the one that you think like every doula should take? I think every doula, no matter what, should take spinning babies because it informs you so much about anatomy and the physiological side of birth and like how those soft tissues come into play. You might have to take it multiple times for it to like sink in, but yeah. I, I think whatever they charge, <laughs> like I, the more. <laughs> uh, uh, I'm in that class, I'm ready yeah. to learn more. Um, and there was so much information. It was so dense that it, like I felt like I got. Take it. I <laughs> I'm going to retake it, but um, I really enjoyed it, and it's actually informed me a lot as a doula to be yeah. able to give better care. The one I would probably skip is um, one that I've already talked about, which is VBAC Link. Yeah. Um, and that's for multitude of reasons, but I especially would skip it because they require you to do uh, certification births, which I find is yucky. Uh, Certification births for VBAC, which is very yucky that essentially you have to experience VBAC birth for you to become a VBAC doula. I find that yucky because that's not what you're there to do. In my own philosophies, in my own thoughts. I find I have issues with certification births in general. Yeah, so. for sure. Yeah. So um, that's what I would state. And I find that what they were charging versus what they actually provided ended up falling short. Yeah. That's so, fair. yeah, th- those yeah. are the ones. So everything else fell in between there. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. How about you? Um, let's see. So, my initial training was through a local birth center. Um, paid $400 for the training, $400 for the certification. Um, I picked it initially because they offered two mentored births. Okay. What does mentored birth mean? So I would be there with a seasoned doula and we would doula together, essentially. Okay. So one, I was to shadow the doula and kind of just be a fly on the wall and then the next one was supposed to be the opposite where they're the fly on Mm. the wall type thing okay as a baby doula i was like oh my god i need that so much there's no way that i'll know what to do as a full season doula spoiler i knew exactly what to do from the moment i stepped in there from the moment i started a prenatal right i knew it you know it i promise you know it you don't see someone working through labor and just like sit there and stare at them like and if you do that's your sign that maybe it's time to go right <laughs> and like sometimes not to say there's not times to be quiet and right, silent right and like watch and observe right but you're there and you're doing something and right. even your presence there is doing something it does and the hand holding does something and the affirmations and the water and the applesauce like yeah even the littlest things do something yes so that would be my advice because i know we're going to talk about mentorship as well like you do not have to be shadowed like you do not have to watch someone else be a doula to be a doula Mm. you absolutely do not i think it would be cool i would love to see all of my doula friends at births because I think that would be so rad to see like it's like such a special thing yeah like for sure you know like that few people get to see but you don't need it right so you're gonna find your own style and your own groove so but that was my main attracting to this training right in the certification so do you feel people are are attracted the word you used to shadowing births because of confidence 
Yeah. Okay. Um, I guess that that's a question out to you guys. Like, yeah, go ahead and let me know yeah. uh, what your reason is because I I find it really interesting that people want to shadow. Yeah. Um, because my question to you is, are you afraid? Yeah, maybe. <laughs> and why are you in this space if you're fearful of birth? Yeah. If I just thought I wouldn't know what to do. Right. Mm-hmm. And I thought that maybe there was more to it than I didn't understand. Or I wouldn't remember the exact right position to put somebody in and blah, blah, blah. Like, I thought that all of that information would like go out the window. <laughs> And just like out your ears. It's very interesting because there is times in my life that I struggle with that. Mm-hmm. Births are not one of them. Like, it's super freaky. That's why I'm like, oh, I was supposed to do this. Like, I did my first birth and I was like, I was supposed to do this. This is it. Like, this is right. what I'm doing. Like, I knew exactly what to do and what to offer and what to say. And like, mm-hmm. so great. But it was like this, like, confidence thing. Like, well, I took like 10 hours of training like is that enough to know like right but it wasn't just 10 hours of training it was so much time invested into education and learning from other doulas and research and all that stuff that led up to deciding I wanted to be a doula it wasn't like a fluke thing for me right but so I did that training um of course I did it in March of 2020 (laughs) so everything went to crap And what's interesting is that because of COVID, a lot of their standards changed and I only got one mentor birth anyways. So was it the one you got to shadow or was it the one where you were instructed? Well, it was the one I kind of took over. (laughs) Ah, okay. But it was supposed to be I'm shadowing someone, but I had a great like mentor doula, right? Mm -hmm. Who was amazing. And she was like, you got it. She was like, I was peeking my head in. You, you got it. Like, you're fine. <laughs> right. She was very confident in my ability, right? Whereas, like, maybe someone else would have, like, taken over and then I would have had to be the fly on the wall type Right. Um, but that's why I was attracted to that. I But the education, I'll save you, I'll save time and say that that is the one that I would skip. Mm. Um, I am grateful that I did my certification births at a birth center. I feel that I kind of had to because of COVID. <laughs> and right. They wouldn't give me a provisional certificate. <laughs> so I kind of had to be at birth centers. But I'm grateful for that. I'm grateful for that understanding of, like, helping people through unmedicated birth. I feel like being out and out of hospital births, there is kind of uh, it's a different feeling there because yeah. there's way less, there's like, way pain less... management yeah. options. So you kind of have to figure stuff out, yeah. right? And you kind of have to try a lot of stuff and you kind of have to like go through the shit and go through the shitty parts of it. Right. And I feel like that was a valuable, those are valuable lessons to learn. Yeah, for sure. Right. Um, But the education wasn't comprehensive and the education was definitely not intersectional and the education was not about advocacy and the education was very much like, yeah, we have terrible maternal mortality rates. That's why you got to be in a birth center. Not, what do you do in a hospital? How do you support people in a hospital? How do you ad- help people advocate? How do you teach them to advocate for themselves, right? It was very much like the donut type thing. We don't advocate. We're not advocates, right? Okay. It was very much that energy and that attitude. Yeah. And I would, I would, and I, oh, it's very funny because I always said, well, if I, Instead of recertifying, I'm going to go through birthing advocacy. Yeah. And I recently got a scholarship to go yeah, through you did. Full training. And I'm so excited. And it's been already so much information and already so much that, like, I'm like, yes, this is what I needed. Right. right. So it is online. That can be tough. I totally get that. Because, like, when the in-person trainings, like, I had three weeks of in-person trainings and two weeks of online training because of COVID, I was like, oh, shit, like, I needed to be in person. (laughs) So I've kind of had to make myself, like, yeah, hyper-focus. Hyper-focus on it and fix it. Um, So even though I got a um, scholarship for it, which I'm really grateful because I wouldn't have been able to afford that on my own, like, I'm grateful for it. Right. Um, 
And I also, the reason why I fell in birthing advocacy is because I took their childbirth education class. Yeah. Which, again, highly, highly valuable. Especially, even if you're not going to teach childbirth classes. Because I feel like that it's already informed, like, what I share with my doula clients. And yeah. And how, you know, list the stuff that I find important to teach them. Yeah, for sure. So, for sure. So now I'm teaching classes and I'm doing doula work. I think they'll balance each other out very well. Um, I also took acupressure for birth. Yep. That was a great tool because I'm all about trying to find tools that are like. What can I do with my hands? Yes. (laughs) What can I do with like me, right? Right. Without having to like add another thing to the doula bag type thing. Yeah. Um, And I also took my VPAC wizard (laughs) training. Yes, she did. Which big fan would definitely take again thanks when you do your CVAC training I will be there like, yeah VBACs and especially that one I've had consults with VBAC clients and I'm like got nervous yes yeah <laughs> because which we've talked about on this podcast before the wildly like advice like that contradicts oh, yeah. each other at every turn oh yeah for sure like Someone said you, you had to have an epidural, and someone else said you cannot get an epidural. Yeah, and like they all all that information was like that, so it was very helpful to like yeah figure out what was like not a myth, <laughs> like like actual like yeah. hands on knowledge and advice kind of thing, and um, I will add another quick like gold flag. Hmm. Your training should talk to you about business business practices. Yeah, it should. should have you write a, a like a, a have you write a business plan? Talk to you about different things like the basics, like LLCs, and like again because if you're not doing this as a hobby, and you do need to make money off of this, you do need to figure out how much you're gonna fucking charge for it. Yes, and how much. Like you need to, how many train, how many clients you need before you you make a profit, right? Yeah. I know that Best Doula teaches people that, yeah. which is an organization that I think is pretty cool. Um, and they focus heavily on the business side of doula work. Um, I do know that uh, Nicole Hammock uh, had a doula tog training yeah. that she did. And she talked to people about how to calculate costs versus like what to charge and yeah. like all of this. So... Yeah, that's totally a gold flag. Yeah. If they <laughs> look at you and go, it's 20 minutes of us talking about business practices by this book. It, nah. Nah. We <laughs> 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 should definitely have a module that teaches you about that. Um, I think that's it. I Yeah, that's all my trainings. I am taking Spinning Babies in April, which I think will be great. Um some of the other trainings that people talk a lot about would probably be placenta encapsulation. Yeah. Um, what are some other ones that... Well, people talk about ones? childbirth education. So yeah. I've heard of the big guys like Lamaze and Bradley Method yes. and Evidence-Based Birth. And like there's there's some big guy names out there. Yeah. Again, I think the best thing to do is like truly research them, see what fits them both the most and assess from there. Like, yeah. are those people posting the way that you would want to post? And like, what are they doing? Hypnobirthing is another one. And I can tell you off of those, I wouldn't do any of them because <laughs> that's me. And like, I, I don't dig a lot of them. Yeah. Um, and um, it's because they come from this like privileged mindset where people can spend 12 weeks in a class. Like, yeah. and I have a hard time signing up for organizations. That, for anything that's that going to be that long. Like, uh... For that kind of expectation out of new parents or even like seasoned parents who are trying yeah. to take another childbirth class. like Or people with jobs. Like it can be really tough to do 12 weeks. It was hard for us to do when I, when we were pregnant. Five right. weeks was like. Right. A lot. Yep. So the like, there's Ad- plenty of those. Advocacy has a childbirth class, educator class. I thought that was great. They have rep- they have pre recorded and like active cohort cohort, cohort options. Oh my god. Yeah. Um, also, Erica Davis is a um, black creator and doula that has. Um, childbirth educator trainings as well Ooh, fun. her handle is whole body pregnancy okay and 
there's like such a great focus on postpartum Mm -hmm. and she teaches some of the um modules for the birthing advocacy class which is how i found out about her gotcha um and i know the placentas are a big deal for people i know that belly binding is a big deal for people if i was gonna do like a true belly binding like certification and all of that i was trained by someone i know um, if I were to go through it, though, I would go through, uh, it's this gal's, her name is Princess. She owns Belly Bind, B-E-L-L-I-B-I-N-D. Mm-hmm. Um, her organization is fabulous, oh. and she does essentially, like, this hybrid agency contractor model. So after you get certified, she literally sets you up with a mini business oh, to cool, do yeah. it. Yeah. So okay. she was, she's one that I would shout out to do that kind of stuff with. Yeah. But there's so many, when you go into this, the ways to like spider web out your business, <laughs> there's so many different ways to do it. Yeah. I've known people who become like herbalists. I, <coughs> I've known people who are like certified as like massage therapists and mm-hmm. all of these different. We didn't even talk about postpartum. Uh, right. Postpartum. Or, <laughs> yeah. Um, abortion doulas or fertility doulas like there's so many other things there's adoption there. doulas there's yeah. like all sorts of things and i think once you get into this work you can like truly find yourself in a way like i feel like it is a bit of a self-discovery of yeah. like what really gets you ticking and like what really gets you going because you'll discover that while you're around yeah. the different births that call to you and that kind of stuff so yeah i think that's great especially because you see people niche and then do really well. Um, my my one word of caution when we're talking about trainings would be like, there's not a number of trainings that's gonna make you feel like I'm you, ready. <laughs> nope. Right. I can do this. Right. And I see new doulas be like, well, maybe if I try this training. Maybe if I try this training. Maybe if I try this training. And I see like a lot of like, well, I'm having a hard time marketing. The doula side of it, why don't I become a childbirth educator? Why don't I become a placenta encapsulator? Why don't I, right? And they think that these add-on things will help. And sometimes they do, to be fair. But it is another thing you have to market. Yeah. And that's my only caution, right? Because some trainings are just additional knowledge, like spinning babies and things like that. That's an additional knowledge thing, right? Childbirth educator, placenta encapsulator, postpartum doula, all of those things are additional facets to your business that you're going to have to market. And I yes. don't think we talk about, one, how hard that is. So two, hard. <laughs> how hard that is when you have multiple things, right? You have yeah. one Instagram page and you have 12 services you offer. That is going to become harder, in my opinion, to market. Not easier, I'm someone who has many services yes. <laughs> and many products. I can tell you there was a point in time where I was producing um, multiple pieces of content in one day. Yeah. And it's really hard. Um, I would not recommend zero out of 10. <laughs> However, I will say that what it did do for me is it really helped me figure out what I should be focusing on because mm-hmm. I saw what the reaction was off yeah. of each of those pieces. But be smarter than me, <laughs> figure out what you're really passionate about, and then start the marketing yeah. aspect because Rather than the backwards. like a, a crazy backwards call out, which if you guys haven't listened to that episode, this would be such a great one to listen right after yeah. is the doula Darcy where she talks about marketing is talking about your passion. And, such a good episode. And that's essentially what I'm telling you to do. Like make sure that this is actually a passion of yours. That's it. Like, yeah. make sure it's actually, like, whatever you choose to add on as a service, make yeah. sure it's an actual passion and not a Band-Aid. Yeah. Like, and I, I think it can be hard because I feel like I've thought that many times. Like, okay, what's the thing that I can add on that people will be crazy about? I think also. It's about find, people finding you in the first place. Yeah. It's not that people are finding you and being like, yeah, I'm good. They're not finding you, right? So then that comes into, like, this is a business, right? You are going to have to market. You are going to have to have some business sense. You are going to have to figure that stuff kind of out, yep. you know? And that does take time. That does take patience. And I will 1,000% acknowledge the privilege of having that time Yes. to figure that out. I will also say, um, 
as a piece of advice because when I decided I was going to be a doula, I decided I was not only going to be a VBAC and general cesarean doula, I was going to offer that education. Yeah. Um, sometimes your plan of what you're going to do and be is going to end up wildly different than who you become. And yeah. that's okay. It's okay yeah. if you walk into this work being like, I'm going to be a this yeah. and I'm going to be perfect at it and be like, oh shit, I thought I was going to be a home birth. Like... Uh, only doula and it turns yeah. out I really like hospitals like that's okay yeah. you're allowed to pivot you're allowed to pivot and and move towards what you what's calling towards you and yeah maybe you don't when you before you're in the 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 community of it I feel like there's so much you don't know yes and there's like it's just the very tip of the iceberg that you're seeing when you're hearing about doulas as I'm talking about even like once you get behind the paywall of the place you're training from you see a lot different stuff and a lot more stuff than you ever thought of. And like, there's just so much more to it. And I think that's a perfect segue into mentorships, which yeah. is our second half of this episode about like, are they worth it? <laughs> right? Yeah. Because that's something I questioned as a new doula. Are they worth it? Are they valuable? Right. When we polled our listeners, everybody who said they had a mentor <clears throat> adored it, said they loved it. Yes. Said they would do it again. And it was so unbelievably helpful. And I've heard that from doulas as well. I have too. Yeah. Um, so I can, I got essentially like this soft mentorship. It, it didn't have the name on it, yeah. but that's what was happening. Um, when I worked with Jenny from, from, VBAC Academy. That's essentially what happened. I got mentored by her. I would call her after birth. She would give me kind of like tips for the next time. And I think that also helped me grow faster. Like, yeah. I don't mean like my platform or my business growth. I mean like me as a doula grow faster yeah. because I was able to like spot out things quicker because I had that sounding board yeah. of someone with more knowledge. Um, a great example is I called her after one of the births and I was like talking about uh, pushing and she's like, yeah, I like to tell people to push as if they're pushing up and towards the ceiling. And I was like, I have no goddamn idea what you're talking about. Shade breathing. Right. Yeah. And it wasn't until the next birth when I like said it because I'm like, this is so fucking stupid. I'm just yeah. going to say it. <laughs> A baby came out. I was like, what the fuck is yeah. this shit? Like <laughs> Talk in my oh, oh cool <laughs> i had no idea about it so um that's an example of like where that mentorship came into play and yeah. allowed me to grow faster than me going maybe to five or six births before hearing it from an ob or a nurse and like oh. having to pick that up myself or maybe taking a childbirth education class where i would learn it right yeah. um i have also mentored some people mm -hmm. Uh, also in an unofficial way and then a more official way. Yeah. So I think that's where I'm heading, whether I like it or not. <laughs> <laughs> is more of like mentoring more doulas and yeah. like that kind of thing. And yeah. Helping people start out, which is funny that you say that because there is no one nicer and quicker to reach out to a new doula than any Howard. <laughs> <laughs> like whether i like it or not right i think you like it i, I here's you like it. i like helping people i don't like being associated with sliminess okay and do you associate mentorship with oh sliminess? yeah i do i really really do okay. okay and it's because um often the mentors i interacted with yeah. where I was like, I would like a mentor. It was like, all right, kid, here's two grand. And like, here's what I do with you. And this is how we operate. But they never like got to know me. It was immediately, like, yeah, I'll mentor you. You don't want to get to know me as a person or like yeah. figure out if we're, if we're even compatible or any of that. That's that stuff yeah. that makes me feel slimy. Cause it's like, cool. Oh, is that just for money? Yeah. 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 Is it for money is it, or is it because you actually want to invest time into me? Yeah. Because I'm going to invest money into you, but you're going to invest time into me. And I find time to be the biggest value. Because it is the biggest value. Because you can't get that back. Yeah. So, yeah. that yeah. That's why I find it slimy. Interesting. I just found mentors puzzling. Mm. So this is my, this was my puzzle because I would... I was a new doula and I would ask advice from people who other doulas and they would say, get a mentor. 
And I'd be like, cool, what does a mentor do? Like, what are they going to help me with? Well, they'll help you feel more confident at births. I've been to four births. I feel very confident in that and my knowledge and it's growing all the time and I feel good. I need help finding clients. Right. Right? How will a mentor help me with that? The, no, no answer. No, no answer. <laughs> every time. Every time, right? And so if people need the confidence at birth and they need the confidence of like having someone to call and things like that, like I think that's great, right? I think that's when a mentor would be valuable. Maybe I'm cocky. Maybe I'm like... <laughs> Or arrogant or whatever, but I was no. like, no, I got this. I'm telling you, I had that moment at my first birth, and I was like, this is it. Right, right yeah. Like, this amazing, like, Big brain. Like, ah, right. Right? And so, like, and that's what kept happening at these births, right? And, like, even the shitty parts, I was like, oh, I know what to do better next time. And... I would do more research and things like that. And as far as having someone to call, I made a doula bestie and I called her and she called me and yeah. we were both new doulas and we brainstormed together and we would spend hours talking about that and kind of like bouncing ideas yeah. off each other and like talking about our experiences and talking like that. That's where I got all of that like stuff from it. And then I wasn't afraid to reach out to more established doulas and have coffee and have or have lunch or whatever or network or plan networking events which is what I was doing when I first started in this community like I wasn't afraid of any of that so I didn't feel like a mentor would help me so to me a mentor really is for the person who chose the organization that was not a good match for them and to fill in the gaps for that Okay. That's what I feel a mentor is so for. You find ideally you would find someone who's doing what you do the way you want doing what you want to do the way that you want to do it. Right. The vibes are right, right? Right. And it's for the person who's like, what do you mean we just covered 20 minutes of like whether I like how to run this business? Yeah. Like it's for that person who's like, I I got that part down, right? Yeah. I I know childbirth education and like how to talk to clients. Uh-huh. I don't know how to like set up a client management system like do i need that and like how do i market myself and like is instagram good like yeah. question and mark even that i was like maybe i need to find someone who's a marketing professional right yeah maybe i do need to find someone who's like got it figured out right right <laughs> um so in my case that's that's also why i don't i have like a a weird relationship with this idea of becoming a mentor or like in mentorship because I know one that I would be filling someone's gaps which like helps a lot but then am I also like allowing these organizations to still get away with like crappy training yeah and then the other side being I understand and truly try to honor the beginnings of dealership which is this like knowledge that we're passing through the community and so it makes me feel yucky to like charge people for knowledge that should be passed because it should be passed right so i think that's why you hear me like i i get it yeah well i just never found the uh, the people i talked to i never found it appealing and maybe Mm -hmm. that was just the way they explained it to me for sure because it wasn't like we're gonna help you set up your business and we're gonna help you you know, figure out how to market and we're going to help you find your niche. Like, it was like, we're going to help you feel comfortable at births. We're going to teach you probably spending baby moves. Like, yeah, we're going to make sure you're, you know, that kind of stuff. But like the more business stuff is what I needed help with. Yeah. And we will talk about this when we talk about interviews. I suck at interviews. Yeah. I remember we've, we've had this discussion yes. off camera so and I off podcast. Right. I need someone to help me with that. Right. But that goes, I've sucked at every job interview I've ever gotten. And I'm always shocked when I get the job because I'm like, I'm a great employee. I'm a great person, right? But something it's, about job It's so funny that you me. say this too, because you have a goddamn podcast where you talk and interview people oh. and they interview you. Like, it's oh. so funny to me. So it must be some sort of element of like, 
authority or like power imbalance there that like flips you out but it's so funny I, we'll, so we'll talk about it more next week <laughs> i can tell you um the individuals that i like i've mentored how i structured it was this we are going to go through your beginnings like what do you know what do you need to know um because my goal is that eventually you're just calling me after birth because you just want to call me yeah. Not because you're trying to get information. Right. Yeah. Um, so we go over that. And then I go with you through an interview. And it's a partnership in quotation marks. But yeah. really, your primary client doesn't need to know that. But your primary, you're going to show up to this birth no matter what. Yeah. I'm here as backup. Yeah. Um, but they still are in a group chat all together. So if like you need rescuing, yeah. if you feel like you're drowning, you can text me on the side and be like, I don't know how to answer that question. Yeah. And you can see how I respond. So that way you can maybe pick up from there. Yeah. Uh, so we go through the interview together. I teach you my t- tips and tricks through interviews. And then we do the interview together. And then we discuss after the interview, like how did it go? What are some things I saw from you? Like how can we get your pitch down cleaner if you yeah. rambled or whatever it may be? Then we do the same thing with prenatal. Hey, we're showing up for the prenatal. An hour before the prenatal, we have the discussion of what what the setup will be like. During the prenatal, I have you fly solo, except for when you're like, I don't remember the next part. (laughs) Right? Like you can see the panic, right? Or I hear the rambleys going because of nerves. I'm there to like help smooth over. And then after we have the discussion. Last one is birth. So what you're saying is I should have been mentored by you. (laughs) (laughs) I feel that um, in the same kind of way of like you, as soon as I did it, I knew I was supposed to be here. And I really feel as if most people just need to be reassured that they're supposed to be here. And like the little detail stuff and like the stuff that you maybe don't think about and like and that and, and that's where I felt like even just talking to other new doulas was still helpful, right? Oh, for sure. It was still helpful just to talk those ideas out and like hear their understanding of it and their feedback of it and stuff like that. So m- my main issue with mentorship was the cost, right? So most people are charging quite a bit of money for mentorship. And I struggled with that because I had just shelled out so much money and so much time yeah to train and certify it took me a full year to certify in the times of 2020 right like yeah it took me a lot of time and all of those births were free yeah right so the time and the money and everything that i already invested was so great right that i was like there's just no way that i could do that if i don't know that it's actually going to help me because especially if i have all of the tools and I am so great, except for how to market, which was my big issue and it still is my issue. And the issue I see with everybody who's struggling with being a doula, it's not about, are you a good doula? It's about how the hell do I tell people who I am? Yeah, for right? sure. I feel like, that's fair. You know, that was what I felt like the key missing, like selling point was as far as mentorships. So if mentors are listening out there, so when I tell you with that, <laughs> right, when I tell you that I how I charge for mentorship is going to make you really, really sad when I tell you this, Why? because you're going to be like, oh, she doesn't charge really monies. Uh, what I do is this because it's up to my mentees to bring the clients. Mm-hmm. I essentially charge the mentees a on call fee out of what their clients pay them. So it's mm-hmm. nothing actually out of their pocket. Yeah. In a way. So. But the deal is like the minimum you can charge is five hundred dollars. Yeah, I'm not going lower than that because I'm going to take two fifty. Yeah, there's no reason you should be paid less yeah. than that. And then as we go together and grow, I still take that two fifty, but yeah. you're still charging more, and you need me less and less. Yeah, because again, the hope is one day you stop calling me. One All right, day, let's let's go back in time <laughs> and. Let's do it all over. Right. Um, but I found that that was the, the best way to do it. Um, and if I were ever to be in a place where I took on a mentor role, that's how I would approach it as well. And I probably, like, 
it the mentorship thing I remember and I've heard other doulas say just made it feel like I've been doing this for a long time. Yeah. And you have to pay me to get that knowledge. Yeah. And I understand that side of it, but I also understand what you said about ancestral knowledge and sharing that knowledge and sh- and when now when I see doulas like holding information or not freely sharing it, I'm like that kind of sucks. Yeah. Right? And that's kind of what we're doing on this podcast is openly sharing our information and thoughts and like this kind of stuff to for other doulas to hear, you know, for free. Right? It like, is so free. It is on every platform. Yes, <laughs> right? And so it's like I struggle with that a little bit because although I want people to get paid for their time, I also totally feel like Oh, for sure. There's like that community over competition stuff. It feels like people are holding it back because they don't want to share their secret sauce, per se. (laughs) I'm also very cautious of like who calls themselves a mentor? When are they calling themselves a mentor? And that goes back to my gold flags, right? How long have you been in this business? How are you now categorizing yourself as mentor? Have you been in it for a long time or... Have you been six? Like, what is your yeah. understanding of successful doula? Because I really don't want to take a mentorship from someone who's taking 12 births a month and they're only showing up to three. Yeah, you're busy, yeah. but you're not. Or figuring out a way to show up to three. Right. Like, there's no way that's sustainable. Right. And this will be my little side rant about, like, you should never pay somebody to teach you how to be something they've never been. Right? Right. They cannot teach you how to be. A successful long-term doula who can't burn out if they've been doing it for one year. Right. They cannot teach you how to make lots of money. Like, right? They can't. They cannot teach you that if they have not been making lots of money for a long time. Right. Right? So that would be like, if I was going to look for gold flags in a mentor, I would be definitely someone who talks to you about the marketing side of it. Definitely someone who's already had the level of success that you want. Yes. Right? Because otherwise, no one's going to be able to tell you to get to a place that they haven't been to yet. Correct. Right? And you don't know that this person who's mentoring, who's been doing it for a year, won't burn out next year. Or Or didn't make a profit. Or any of that other stuff. The other side, maybe they've been here for 10 years, but they've been doing it on and off. Yeah. And they haven't been able to make it a business. right? Right. Because if I was going to pay someone to teach me that stuff... They better know what they're doing. Right, (laughs) Right? for sure. They better know that kind of stuff. And even then, it calls into question, like, what is successful, right? Some people appear to be really busy doulas. And I'm like... Girl, I just heard you say, like, you haven't had a birth in six months. Yeah, and that's fine. Right. Why are you pretending? (laughs) Right, yeah. There's a difference between, like, pretending on Instagram so people think you're busy (laughs) versus, like, we're out to coffee. Like. Yeah. So, again, it's, like, different levels of success. Because some people's success is, I'm turning people away and I'm charging $2,000. And some people are, like, I did two births a month. I'm I'm busy. Right. You know? So, again, think lots of things to think about right don't just pick the first mentor who reaches out or whatever the same way you would vet a training vet a mentor like yeah. you said you should be looking at the content that they're sharing you should ask them if they have other ment- mentees that they can ask about their experience like don't just like throw money at people and hope, hope it works yeah <laughs> and i think that's that's a really good point i think also maybe choosing a mentor who has understanding of who you're trying to certify with is really big. So if you're like, nah, I don't care. I mean, and Alex, I fucking love Dona. That's where I'm putting in my chips. Yeah. Go find a mentor then who knows about Dona yeah. because they'll be able to I'm like, not be able to help you. <laughs> no, me either. Me either. I don't know how to use a fax and that would, that's what Dona wants. So don't call me. <laughs> that's Emmy so box that everything should be online. And I agree. <laughs> not online like come on it's not that hard oh you can pay your taxes online if i can't uh, be fully (laughs) certified if i can't be fully certified with you by using my fucking phone like i don't want it i don't want it in my life (laughs) 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 um i think this is like 
the biggest thing to take away though is where is the heart of whatever you're going to take whether it's a mentor whether it's training whether it's like what you're walking into this like period of your life of like i'm a i'm a doula now where is your heart sitting and why are you doing it and why is why are they doing it and making sure that those like like you said have the correct vibes right and i think you'll be okay vibes are important it's like that's the intuition you need to listen to right yeah exactly i got a good vibe right that's part of it and just as a reminder your guys's intuition's on point if you get the like spidey sense of like run run Yes. And if you get the spidey <laughs> sense that this is like a good thing, it, it probably and even is. And the spidey sense of like, uh, I don't know. Yeah. Maybe look a little further into it, right? Right. Maybe think about it a little bit more. But you're fully equipped. Yeah. Don't don't let anyone tell you different. You can do it. You can do it. I, like I, I picked a training specifically because I felt that I needed to be shadowed. Yeah. And although I had an amazing yeah. mentor that I really liked doesn't matter right like i still could have done it without her and that's what showed me like oh okay right right like that's what i'm saying being a doula is something that's in people it is so so thank you guys for listening our fire starters yes thank you so much um tune in for next two episodes of how to do it yep um we'll be talking about um interviews and prenatals next week and then we will be talking about how to get more clients with our super awesome guest um Letisa yeah from ps love mommy um and until then i'm alex Barr, and i'm emmy the birth wizard bye